All right, let's move ahead. Um, in these lean times, transaction costs have become a hot-button issue for many companies. Uh, earlier, Global Finance conducted some research among its readers, uh, and we asked them that what they were doing to control transaction costs. Uh, the most frequently res uh, response when it came to legal consulting and investment banking was do it yourself. Um, and in terms of printing costs, the most popular answer was to use electronic alternatives. Alan, what do you think? Can companies go it alone, or are there other ways to save money? I, it depends entirely on the company. I mean, there are companies that are completely capable of doing the most sophisticated cross-border transactions in-house, um, and they have the staff and the training to do that. But generally speaking, even companies that are very sophisticated uh, U.S. public issuers uh, don't have in-house staff that are sufficiently trained to cover all of the regions of the globe and therefore outside financial advisors and legal advisors and consultants can be extremely important and and, and that adds an incremental cost to, to the transaction that has to be uh, weighed against um, the budgetary concerns and, and the desire to enter the new geographic market in the cross-border case. I think um, the uh, the issue really is to look at risk mitigation and which we've talked about um, and deal processes and timeliness and resources versus cost and what is capable of being done internally and for every company there's going to be a different balance. And how, how does a company save money on legal costs? I, again I would say communication. So um, the, the, way, the way costs tend to get out of control is if there's uh, poor communication between client and advisors or among advisors or even from one side of the table to the other in a transaction, the greater the level of communication, the more likelihood there will be that one doesn't have to restructure the transaction to take into account a tax issue that hadn't been uh, properly analyzed or a deal is being tax driven in a particular direction but you have enforcement issues in terms of seizing collateral if you have a you know, secured transaction or you may have arbitration issues that relate to potential expropriation risks. So all of these, this mix of factors has to be taken into account at inception early on to avoid having gone down one direction that is very highly structured and then finding the structure doesn't work for another reason. I, Dan and Chris, I don't know if that's been your experience, but <laughs> Chris, I know you've done some, some research on this subject, too. Yes, I mean, I, I think that, you know, um, I agree with Alan that there are, some, there are some companies that are very adept at doing deals um, in all environments, and, um, and they tend to be serial acquirers who have developed an expertise in, in, um, in, in executing transactions. However, I do think there's a little bit of a misperception that, um, um, that external advisors are a more uh, costly um, approach to doing deals than deploying your internal resources. And um, the reason for that is because you're still deploying internal resources. You just may not be um, capturing that cost or measuring that cost. And in, our, in the research we did, we, we asked that question. Um, you know, we asked um, um, our, our, the, our survey participants whether or not they, they measured the cost, their internal cost of doing deals. And what we found was most companies do not. Um, we also asked them to estimate what they thought their, in, the, their internal cost of was on a, as a percent, you know, as measured in terms of a percentage of, um, of transaction um, value. And it was meaningful. It was, um, it was um, you know, uh, most companies reported that was about 3% of transaction costs, which is significant. So I think, you know, in terms of going back to your question, Joe, on what companies can do to save, to, to, and it's not so much to save costs, it's to manage cost efficiently and effectively. Um, I think some of the things they can do is, um, you know, is, to, is to operate, manage their deal process and their deal team and their resources efficiently. So in other words, I've seen, and I'm sure uh, I'll get some smirks from Alan and Dan on this one, um, I've certainly worked with clients that will deploy 100 people on a deal. Um, and they'll have lengthy due diligence checklists and they'll go through the process and look at every piece of paper. But then there's no, they don't have a, a streamlined process to kind of synthesize that information into, uh, into meaningful deal advice. 
Um, so, you know, they're deploying a lot of resources but not really getting the benefit of deploying all those resources. So I think, you know, some of the le leading practices, again, relate back to making sure you are you have an efficient process, an effective process, you have a good decision framework. Um, we're seeing clients that are, are, are focusing on, um, on, on issues-based due diligence now rather than um, you know, going through a laundry list or a checklist, phasing their diligence so you learn you and you make a discrete decision whether or not to proceed. These are the ways that I think you can better, better manage cost in a deal. Okay. Dan, from an investment banking point of view? Sure. I think there's, there's two elements that, that I think of in terms of how banks try and add value and cut costs in transactions. Number one is planning. Mm -hmm. And often you see that when things get away, and I think you both made the comments about deals getting away from their clients uh, and building 100-person teams when they're not really competitive on a transaction. Mm -hmm. But it's really getting that planning process up front, find the issues, identify them, do a initial review, and then find out what experts you need to actually chase down those issues. Uh, the second that I see a lot of today, is, especially on the buy side, is phasing, which is we'll only do a little bit of work, we're only going to spend a little bit of money till we find out if we're closer to winning the deal. Mm -hmm. And so particularly in auction situations, particularly with financial sponsors, you know, they don't spend a dime until they're in the second round, mm -hmm. and they don't really spend a dime unless they think they've got a very high probability of winning. And so they're managing that cost and you know, pushing it onto other advisors uh, that may be in-house, may be out-house, uh, the other thing I think we see a lot of is uh, people now going to structured relationships. And so I think with legal firms in particular, you see that where you'll be a partner dedicated to a certain client doing all of their M&A stuff, and you'll be on a retainer, but be expected to manage your costs down, not up, you know, on a per-transaction basis. Okay. All right. Anything else on deal costs? All right. We'll move on. 